is somebody that's always in their mind like, I get it, oh my gosh, and you want to tell the whole world because you've just created, you've extracted meaning from within. Those that even if they have opened up, all right, and they were seeking information because information is not knowledge. So enlightenment would be in the category of information. Why? Because as it's sold, as it ends up being, all you're doing is changing your perception of reality, just seeing other templates of symbolic expression. There are no answers there if you're depending upon anything you experience to give you those answers. No symbol means anything until you give it meaning. So in truth, if you have the meaning inside and you come up with symbols and you see them in your objective reality, maybe somebody else came up with it too, you have an understanding, an immediate understanding. Sometimes that can be faked or replicated. Somebody's been indoctrinated into a system where they had to learn specific meanings to symbols and so one who is in the know, one who has knowledge, may run into somebody like that. And the person may have learned enough so that you have an understanding. But the person that learned it will still look at you if you came from within to know in a way that, that they're curious. How do you know? Because you seem to have a different... A, a fuller understanding of it, a non-polarized understanding of it. They learn a few specific ways to talk about it and what it means, but you can talk about it endlessly with different metaphors. What's the difference? Well, what's the difference between reading a book and memorizing somebody else's conclusions and extracting meaning and coming to your own. It's like the difference between a muffin top and a muffin. They've got you all eating up muffin tops, but you don't have the knowledge underneath. Is that a permanent thing? Absolutely not. The reason you don't know anything is because many people that do have knowledge, even if they wanted to tell you, it's like they are on a broadband connection and you're on 56K. There is so much information, and unfortunately, as it is right now, the general population has no idea. They look at a symbol, maybe they're taught a symbol. Either they really don't have any understanding of it, or it's a very limited understanding. If you have knowledge inside of you, you could sit there and talk about that one symbol all day. There's more than one meaning attached to symbols. Like I told you, a deer in the woods can mean more than one thing by stomping their hoof. If you seek the symbol, the muffin top, you will never have the whole muffin. And this is what people do when they try to seek videos and books and all. They're looking for muffin tops. They're looking for the end result. Therefore, you are dependent upon the meaning that is given to you. So somebody in the know, if they're talking to somebody that isn't in the know, it can be very difficult. Why? Well, a very naive thing to say, or if somebody's trying to manipulate you, control your mind, they'll say this, the truth is an easy thing to say. And anybody who speaks for a long time to you, they're trying to manipulate you. Now, that's a very naive thing to say. Yes, somebody who depends upon a lot of words, really trying to control what you're thinking, could very well be trying to manipulate you. But if you depend upon length of speech, and that's where your perception lies, you wouldn't be able to tell anyway. If someone's trying to manipulate you, you should pick up on that within seconds, regardless of what they're saying. The truth is something easy to say. If one person in the know is speaking to another person in the know. In other words, you've both reached the same conclusions and you know it. You know when other people know. You just do. That's why they don't say anything other than that. You know when other people know. And you say, well, that's ambiguous. And that's ambiguous to you. But that is a symbol 
To say that sentence, you know when other people know, that is a symbol. And those who have come to the conclusion on their own understand the full meaning of that. Those who may have heard that from some philosopher, and they were told that that philosopher was brilliant, so they decided to dwell upon things the philosopher said. If a philosopher says to you, you just know, you just know when other people know, well, you trust that philosopher because everybody has given them a five-star rating. So you think, well, that must mean something. So I'm going to sit around and think about it. You can't sit around and think about that. That is a result of so much, so many experiences. So, if I say you just know when other people know, you don't have to sit around and assess and calculate in your mind and think of behavioral patterns or they said this and they said that. I'm going to put two and two together and formulate an assessment of them and what their intentions are. If you are doing that, that is robotic. It's nothing against you. If I were against you, I wouldn't be trying to help. It's the conclusion that matters. If you reach it on your own, because a conclusion is a symbol. It is a symbolic representation. The quote, the conclusion that has so much attached to it. All of your experiences that tie in to the conclusion. How do you extract meaning? Well, perhaps you have an experience. It could be a social experience. It could be anything. And that experience is finished, and that means nothing to you. Then you have another experience, and you see that it's different. But there's something similar to that other experience. And you're kind of like, hmm. And then you have a third experience in your life. And it's really similar now, all three of them. Then you have a fourth experience that solidifies the similarity and prompts a question. It is the fourth experience that prompted you to ask the question, but it required the other three preceding it. The fourth experience, if it were isolated in and of itself, would never have prompted it. You needed all four experiences. So now you have the question. And maybe you have a whole other series of experiences that are happening so that you can extract meaning to address the question. And maybe after all of that, you come to a conclusion. And now that conclusion propels you in your advancement of understanding and extracting meaning in your life. And you start a whole other series of experiences. And that's just one facet of your life. And maybe simultaneously you have 30 other paths going like that, like I just explained. And maybe all 30 of them come to one peak of a conclusion. And you need it. All 30 paths that had many, many experiences within each path leading up to minute conclusions that come together that lead you to a new understanding. That takes time. It takes attentiveness. And the desire to have meaning. To have purpose. And now that one new understanding could be one of thousands that eventually tie in. And you don't even know it, right? Until you reach the... <gasps> The, oh my gosh. And all of these things come from within. Your ability to make use of pattern recognition. To see how things are always and never the same. What do they have in common? Did you get out there and experience people of different cultures? Were you too busy trying to project your culture onto them and see what they would say? Or were you trying to figure out what you had in common? I did that my whole life. In the moment of doing it, I didn't really necessarily know why I was motivated to do it. My spirit did, but my conscious mind didn't. Your spirit will lay breadcrumbs for you throughout your entire life or path. So if you come to an understanding, and then several understandings, and you know how much is involved with it. You can tell other people the details of your path. 